Today is all about playing with Grafana and Home Assistant. I made a video on using discrete values for binary sensors so that I could plot them on a graph. Well, today what I'm going to do is show you a couple of different plugins that allow me to display those sensors a little bit differently. So let's get started. All right, here we are in my Home Assistant dashboard. Uh, we're going to need to do a couple things before we get started because we need some plugins. So first thing to do is go to Supervisor, and I'll assume you already have Grafana installed and Influx installed. And I've in, uh, made a video on that, so you can check that out, and I'll tell you how to get started. Uh, so I'll go to Grafana here, and we're going to do a little bit of uh, work on our configuration. Now I've already done this and installed it, so I'm just going to show you the values that I used. You can see here that I have added a few plugins. I've, uh, and the two we're gonna most be most uh, concerned with today are Natel Discrete Panel and the Flat Status Map Panel. All you need to do is take these exact things, blow those up for you. These plugins are the only two I'm gonna work with today. So if you wanna install those, you add plugins to your configuration and you add these two values. Uh, I've left everything else as defaults here. And then once you, uh, once you make a change, you'll click on save. And now you want to restart the add-on with your changes. And we're starting back up. And now you can see that it's successfully installed the discrete panel and the status map panel. You should get those uh, two indicators. And if you do, then you're all good. All right, now we've verified that's installed. Let's go back over to Grafana and I'm gonna shrink this back down to a respectable size. And I'm gonna use my demo dashboard. That's my favorite go-to for working on things. All right, so now we've got those plugins installed. We should have them listed under our visualizations for our new panel. So if we go down to add a panel, then we go down to visualization here we should see both the status map and discrete. So we do have both of those. All right, so I'm gonna choose a discrete panel as my visualization here. And for this particular query, I'm gonna do this one by hand because it doesn't quite work otherwise. And um, I'm selecting a state value. So I'm gonna just get rid of all this. We'll just type it up. We're gonna select a state, so a state value. Uh, from state, so selecting the state, essentially just the state, where we're going to specify the entity ID. And I guess I should tell you what I'm doing here is adding my uh, downstairs and upstairs uh, HVAC state, so the status of my air conditioning heating system. Um, all right, so we're going to do this one for downstairs, so we'll call this one downstairs thermostat, uh, downstairs, HVAC state, and we're just going to make sure that it follows along with our time filter. So up here, whatever time filter we have specified here, it will use that for displaying how much data we want. This name right here is the name of my entity. I use a Nest thermostat. so. <laughs> I named the thermostat downstairs and then it added the rest of the stuff. So I have downstairs thermostat, downstairs HVAC state. So once we put that in there, we should start to see our state. And you can see now over the last 24 hours, 54% of the time it's been off and 38% of the time it's been cool. Now these colors are kind of gross to me. I don't like those colors. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to change the mappings for the colors. And you can do that here by just adding additional mappings. So I'm going to say that I want, if it's, if it's running or it's cool, cooling, I want it to be blue. So I'm going to choose a nice blue color and you can see that it changes it to blue already. Um, if it's off, I'm going to want it to be kind of a darkish color so it doesn't display. 
So I'll go to custom and I'll just choose dark, darkish color. So now you can see that the, it just leaves blanks when there's nothing there. It helps me, it helps me better visualize uh, the in-betweens when it's not running. So that's why I do that. And then I'm gonna do one more mapping for heat. Although it's not ready to be heating season yet, I'm gonna put one in here for heat so I can see that as well. And I'll make that one a red and we should see nothing up there. So now what you see is you see every time the air conditioner turns on and is cooling or heating or not running at all. So one other thing I wanna do is I wanna to go to my text value sizes over here and I wanna change, when you hover over it's super big. Um, so I'm gonna make that about a 12 just because I don't need to be so large. You can play around with this, whatever you want it to be, that's totally up to you. Doesn't affect the functionality, just the viewing of it. Uh, one other thing you notice here is there's a lot of space down here at the bottom. And when I display this on the panel, it's gonna have a lot of extra space. So I wanna, I wanna increase the size, the height of this particular row so that it covers more space. So we'll start with a 150 and see what that looks like. Mm, that's okay. I'll just leave that for now and I'm gonna apply it. It'll take me back to the dashboard. I'm gonna save it now as well, just to keep our changes and I can shrink this up a little bit and make it a little bit smaller. Now, if you, if you left that at 50, you could push this, this graph, you could make it a little bit smaller um, so that it wouldn't actually take up so much space on here. Uh, in fact, I, let me just see what happens when we do this. Yeah, see the row height stays high, but it then it takes the legend off. So you have to adjust this to whatever height you want. All right, so that's the uh, upstairs uh, or downstairs thermostat. Let me change the panel title so I know what I'm looking at here. Downstairs thermo. All right, we'll apply it again. So now downstairs thermo and there's our states. All right, so I can do exactly the same thing. In fact, I'm just going to copy this one and I'm going to paste the copy panel right here. Drag it over here so it's on this side. So they're side by side. And then I'm gonna edit it. And I'm going to change everything, or everything that says downstairs, I'm gonna change it to upstairs. So the title is now upstairs thermo. And my entity is exactly the, exactly the same upstairs or down. So I'm gonna change this to upstairs. Change this to upstairs as well. And that should be it for that. And now we can see the upstairs when it ran. And if I drag this down and I drag this, expand this across and I expand this one across, I kind of get an idea. I can compare when the two are running based on the time. So upstairs, there's more heat in the afternoon, evening upstairs. So it's going to run longer. Um, this one just runs more often, but shorter times because it takes less time to cool it downstairs because heat rises and all that, right? So there's the upstairs and the downstairs thermostat. So that's for my HVAC system. Now what I want to do is I want to do some work with my motion sensors. So I'm going to try a different graph for that. And so I'll need a new, a new panel. So I'm going to add that right here. And my visualization, instead of being discrete, is going to be our other new plugin, which is called Status Map. And this one, I can use the Query Builder to build it out with some caveats. So I've played around with the motion sensor values in here, just looking at the motion sensor entity. And the motion sensor entity, uh, for whatever reason, gives me values anywhere from zero to one and all in between. So when I plot that on a graph, what I'm seeing is a whole bunch of different lines with different colors because each color is a different number or a different number value on this particular type of panel or on this particular type of uh, visualization. So rather than do that, I'm gonna use my already 
built out sensor or measurements that I did in my other video. And you can see where I did that here in Node Red. So in Node Red, you will see that uh, every time there's a motion action, that I set a value for each of these. So all I'm doing now, instead of using these one, one and a half and two to display it on the graph in different levels, I'm just gonna use the value in general to display it on a timeline on the graph. So in Node Red, I just insert an influx and you've seen this in the other video if you watched it. I insert these values into influx directly as a measurement. So all I need to do is come back over here to Grafana and rather than use an entity ID like we've done in other, other um, graphs, I'm just gonna use the actual measurement. So kitchen motion is a measurement. I don't need anything else on the from line. And the field um, is gonna be uh, the value. Instead of being mean, which is an average of sorts, I'm going to actually use max, which it really should only be one, two and a half or two or whatever I said over there. So that really doesn't even matter. And on my fill, I'm going to set this to zero because when I do that, I now get everywhere the motion sensor doesn't trip, I get uh, a nice big block of space. So I can tell the difference. It just makes it easier to see. And I'm going to give it a name, kitchen motion or just kitchen, T-C-H-E-N. Because of my paddle, panel title, I will say motion. And it would be redundant to say kitchen motion if my panel title is motion. Now this is, uh, this is pretty holiday-ish coloring, green and red. And I don't like that too much just because it, well, I don't like it. So I'm gonna change the color. And I, I found one down here under scheme. They give you a whole bunch of different schemes you can choose from. The one I like the most uh, today, anyway, is this P-U-B-U-G-N. So I don't know what it stands for, purple, blue, green, I don't know. But what you can see now is you can see all the time the motion sensor fires or triggers in, all, uh, in white and all the green is the area in which it's not firing. I'm also looking at a 24 hour period. So you're seeing a lot of these crammed together. I have two different types of motion sensors. I have one that's wired directly into my panel that's always triggered all the time. There's no delay. And I also have wireless motion sensors that will trigger and to save battery, they'll go into sleep mode for a certain amount of time after they trigger. So four to six minutes, and then they'll go back to, to watching for motion again. So you don't have this uh, bouncing back and forth of, of, the, of the motion sensor to waste the battery. The kitchen one is powered from the wire, so it does it all the time. Um, so let me add a second one and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we'll add another, um, another motion sensor and this one will be the front hall measurement. Again, on node red, you see that I am setting a one value for any time the front hall motion is triggered. These in this new graph can be anything you want them to be. It just needs to be something that triggers a value or inputs a value for this front hall motion. And then this comes over here and looks at it. Now you can already see that I've got front hall motion going on. And again, I'll, rem you know, I'm going to leave this alone. It doesn't really matter. If I were doing the entity ID where it was giving me all the different values, I would only go with max value rather than mean, but even that didn't work right. So that's why we're doing it this way. Uh, again, the fill is going to be zero, so I can see what's happening in between. Wait for it. There it is. And it's, it's because we're using the same uh, panel here, it's using the same scheme, color scheme. And you're still looking at the last 24 hours. And let me just add one more for good measure. I will add the upstairs motion as a measurement. Again, we're only using, we're using measurements directly from influx DB. We're not using entity IDs in this case. And we will again, leave mean alone and we will do a zero for the fill so we can see. Now you could, you could leave the fill as, um, maybe if I could click it, you could leave the fill as null or something else and leave the blanks in between, 
and in some cases in, in some cases it'll it'll look fine and maybe that's what i should do the color choice is your own you can make it look however you want to this actually isn't bad with a white color as the the motion um is they as these lines get really tiny it's hard to see in between them unless you have some sort of background color there so that's why i'm kind of doing this but for sake of consistency we'll leave them all the same and now um, you will see that I've got 24 hours of motion sensing. Now, one thing to keep in mind on this particular graph or this particular visualization, and I'll just choose a period of time where you can see from this point going to the right, there's no motion uh, on this upstairs motion sensor, which I didn't give it a name. So let's call it upstairs. And if I go up here to the other one, this one doesn't have a name either. Let's say front hall. And so now we have both of these with names on them. All right, so again, if you if you see there's no motion. There's motion here at this point, but nothing to the forward. So if I, if I drag and only look at this amount of time here, what you'll notice is number one, my time selector changes up here. And you also notice that the upstairs motion sensor dropped off completely. This particular visualization will only show visualization, visualizations or sensors if they have a value during the period of time that you select um, in that time range up here. So the front hall had a couple of blips here and then the upstairs or the kitchen motion had a bunch of blips here, but the upstairs didn't have anything. What's kind of neat, and let me apply this and go back to the actual dashboard page save it because I want to. One other thing to note, these are pretty resource intensive in your browser. So it's blank here, but if you manipulate it a little bit, it will actually start to display those for you again. So, and you can also refresh the screen if you want to. So now what I have on this page is I have my uh, thermostat information and I also have some motion sensors. As soon as the upstairs motion shows up, because I have this size the way I do, it will compress the other one. And so let's go back to a time frame where I had upstairs motion. So we'll just look at last uh, three hours. And everything will refresh again. This is a very resource intensive couple of visualizations. So they're nice um, to use, but Depending on your your computer or your device you're viewing them on, you might have a little bit a little bit of a delay. It's not downloading the data; it's the actual visualization itself in the browser. All right, so I've chosen the last three hours, and I've got this blips here for the upstairs motion, and it doesn't resize the actual panel; it just squishes them up. So, if you have five or six or seven motion sensors, make sure you take a look at this panel when you're building it so that it looks right when all of the sensors are active because once they start going together, they're gonna to get crammed close together and make your panel size adjustments accordingly, accordingly and everything else. One other note here is this legend is not necessary for this particular motion sensor thing because I don't need to know that it goes from zero to 2.0. That's just the numbers I assign over here and doesn't really matter. I could put one on all of these and it would still show up just fine. All it's doing is on this particular measurement for each one of these, it's putting a tick mark in the influx database for the, the timestamp that that thing occurred, that motion occurred. All right, so let me go one more step here and I will remove the legend because we don't need it on here. Just give us a little more room. Uh, and to do that, we go down here and we click on display or show legend. Again, notice that it's not showing anything here. One way to fix that is to click fit and back to fill again, and it will redraw it. Very resource intensive. And see it's squishing them all, so I could actually do a fit here. Uh-oh, I think I got ahead of myself. It's, yeah, fit makes it look like that. Anyway, let's get rid of the legend. That's gone. And if we did a fill, it would just fill this whole block of editing window. It just takes a lot of horsepower in your browser. All right, so then just apply again and save it. We're gonna 
just save like that. And we could do the same kind of thing with our with our door sensors. Uh, anything that's a binary sensor that you want to measure over time. This discrete's pretty neat because it takes each discrete state. The motion sensors, they don't have a discrete state. For the HVAC systems, I have cool, and here I have off, and then I have cool over here. And so now you can see they're both running. Um, so those are very discrete states. If you have binary sensors or sensors, um, or entities rather, not even sensors, because sensors are on or off, but these uh, entities have states. So if you had an open or closed state for a door, uh, on or off state for a door, potentially you could use the uh, discrete panel or discrete vis visualization to show those discrete states on here as well. Anyway, I'm getting long-winded. Um, so I just want to show you a couple of different ways I display these. So let's make sure I've saved it and I'll show you um, the difference between the two that I've got now. So if I look at my quick glance dashboard in Grafana, you can see that on my motion sensor, and again, there's another video I made on this, you can see it puts uh, dots. And the reason why each one is on its own line is because over here, I set the motion to one, one and a half and 2.0, one, one and a half and 2.0. Um, and so they all show up on a single line so that you can see them on one single graph. So let's compare that to what I did for the uh, status map visualization. It's the same kind of thing. The difference is now you get a line on your graph here on your visual visualization over time. And for me, it's almost easier to see. The other neat thing is you can also see when they disappear off of here, you know that in at least in the last whatever time range you had, let's say last hour, if it doesn't show up on here, there's been no motion sensing for the last hour for that device. So you, if you're, if you have this going somewhere and you're watching it just kind of out of the corner of your eye for motion, um, and something pops up, then you'll know there's motion on that sensor and you can do whatever you want to do to investigate that. All right. So that is it for this particular video. I hope it's useful to you. If, if it is, give it a thumbs up, throw me some comments. If there are some things you would like to see or like to understand about how some of this works, and I don't go into enough detail or I don't show you, make sure you comment below. I'm always looking for ideas. So if you want me to build something or show you something, make sure you do that. Uh, note that in the comments below. Hit that uh, bell icon so you know when I drop some new videos. And we are going to see you on the next video.